Hell up my name is Kaz and I go out shot to take photos. I guess it makes me a landscape photographer. <laughs> A fellow photographer and backpacker invited me on a three-day, two-night journey off of the Pacific Crest Trail during the tail end of summer. We started later in the day and beat the heat as we put on six miles, mostly through enclosed forested areas with multiple water sources and no shortage of both biting flies and ample dust. As the sun quickly started to set, we found our way through the trees to a clearing that opened up to views of a neighboring volcano and found this to be the perfect opportunity to take out my camera and get a sunset shot. With a vertical composition on a tripod with a two second timer, this was the result. Honestly, not too bad for the first shot of a multi-day backpacking trip. We started to settle in and made camp with the last of the available light. Our site was situated nicely for photo opportunities, both during the morning as well as at night. Now, I didn't have my Astro lens with me on this trip, so the 16-35 to f4 PZ lens from Sony would have to do. A little visual noise, but not too bad. The next morning, I took a similar shot of the mountain, but horizontal on a tripod this time instead of vertical. The result was nice silhouettes gradually opening up to the morning alpine glow on the snow-capped volcano. A shot that I am happy with, but not my favorite one I took that morning. While returning to camp, and as luck would have it, the sun peaked directly to the right of the neighboring mountain range and cast its light directly on the tree in front of me. And to be quite honest, I go backpacking specifically for shots like this. The next morning, I woke up to the sounds of yellow jackets and moved all of my gear away from the constant buzzing. The cool morning air hadn't attracted the biting flies just yet, which was good, but as the morning progressed on, it was apparent the yellow jackets were just everywhere, not just near my tent. Luckily, they were only in this area. With temperatures hitting 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius and being in high elevation ranges, staying hydrated and filtering water at every available crossing was important. Shade was ample during this section and there was no shortage of wildflowers dotting the trail. The beauty was perfectly mirrored with towering mountains and peaks in most every direction. Eventually, the trail opens up and shade becomes harder to find. Luckily, we had brought sun umbrellas to help combat the intensity of the direct sun, but that didn't seem to be phasing this fellow we found near the trail. So I switched over to my mirrorless camera with long lens and recorded this clip of the sunbathing fuzz baby in their natural habitat. The further in elevation we climbed, the less shade and neighboring foliage there was to be found. Eventually, we came to this snow crossing that was still present, even in early September. And guess who switched from a sun umbrella to trekking poles? Sounds of broken porcelain and views filled with wandering thoughts. Not only was there one volcano, but another directly behind where I stood. Peak heat of the day was coming, and I wanted to find one more composition before heading down the mountain. And there stood a wave of shale and stone, which was perfect for leading lines. The resulting photo is crisp, and the sharpness is good, however there really isn't any interesting light, so for me it's an okay photo, but I would have loved to be here during sunrise or sunset. Someday. We made our way back down the mountainside in peak heat, once again crossing the snow with the aid of trekking poles. The route quickly drops elevation and goes from arid and desolate to arid and fertile with more opportunities for shade, which we took most chances we could. And the biting flies were back, and they were brutal. The name of the game was to keep moving and hope that once the temperature goes down, the flies would retreat. Sun rays cascaded through the treetops of expansive views, and we made our way through more dusty crossings and rocky terrain, looking for a place to take photos and make camp. Eventually came to a creek crossing to filter water and took that opportunity to snap a couple photos before the sun went down. <laughs> the presence of wildflowers was baller.net. It's always nice to have a second chance of spring, even at the tail end of summer. Moments before the sun went down, I got this shot, which features lush alpine fuzzy greenery and, and water and also a, a sunburst at F9. With the last of the night's light, I decided to take a third photo of the neighboring volcano, but this time used a much longer lens. That presence of the alpine glow reflecting off of the snow and towering over the neighboring forest, that just does it for me. Not too bad for a handheld shot. We made our camp for our second night tucked behind a grouping of trees. The views were plentiful, and so was my appetite. A well-deserved meal and a well-deserved night's rest was a perfect end to a great day. 
Relaxing early mornings inside of the tent give way to coffee, breakfast, and sweeping views. The morning sun was enticing, but with rising temperatures came the flies again, and we were forced to retreat and pack up inside of our tents for the remainder of the morning. The final day would take us high into the mountains. As we said goodbye to the trees, we were met with staggering views. Wild flowers and flowing grasses danced in the wind, yet as beautiful as it was, a neighboring wildfire smoke was entering the valley. Sun and wind were plentiful. The wind greatly helped with temperature and keeping the bugs at bay. And for as hot as it was and as dusty as it was, at least there was multiple water options for us to be able to filter water. All in all, it was a beautiful scene, but the smoke kept pouring in, and those last few precious miles of plentiful wind helped us be able to take breaks and apply more sunscreen, of which was necessary before heading down into the valley where the wind would completely cease. This would be the last moment of peace before entering the valley of the biting flies. The sun turned orange, and I don't think I've ever hiked four miles that fast before. And I think I said it best. Heading back down to the car, happy with a lot of the shots that I got. Can't wait to get home and edit them. I get some fizzy water, um, change it to some nice fresh clothes. Get back, start editing some photos, try and get to bed at a decent hour. The last couple miles winded through a dusty forest until emerging back at the trailhead. I sat in disastro van and I drank a fizzy water and relaxed after a long, exhausting, and successful photography adventure. All photos in this video were taken on the Sony A1 full frame camera with the 16 to 35 f4 PZG lens. I absolutely love this lens. And for telephoto shots, the 70 to 350 OSS crop sensor lens that, at a crop factor of one and a half, acts like a 105 millimeter to 525 millimeter lens at about a pound of weight. Hmm. To see more of my work and to learn how to take photos like these, head over to my website at cadsbaker.com, sign up for classes and exclusive video. All right, that's it for me, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>